excited to welcome on our YouTube page for the Hook film three lovely mermaids, but they don't need any introduction. So let me have them introduce themselves to you. Hi, I'm Stephanie First, and I play the Blue Mermaid. I'm Regina Russell, and I play the Pink Mermaid. And I'm Shannon Keyes, and I played the Green Mermaid. And the inner girl in me is screaming right now because all the girls who used to watch Hook, this was our favorite scene. And and I don't think the three of you have spoken or maybe seen each other all together since the Hook film came out. Is is that true? I think we had lunch once, maybe. Didn't, Didn't we? we have lunch once at, 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 at that restaurant that Steven Spielberg on the milk bar? Or Milky Way. Yeah, or, yeah, yeah. We did, Regina, and Stephanie didn't make it that day, but it was the two of us. We had we had a photo shoot afterwards, and I think that might have been the last time we were all three together. Oh, okay, yes. Yes, I still thank have you, this. Regina. You, you but we, uh, but we worked on that movie. I mean, we, it was a minute and a half in the final cut, but we worked on that movie for, what, two months, maybe? I don't remember how long, but it took a while. We needed to go to scuba diving school, so it was spread out. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and we took uh, scuba lessons together, and then we fittings, fittings, endless fittings, and then there was then, a scene uh, that was cut. <laughs> right, we shot a scene that was cut, and I think that scene was actually it involved Bob, who played Smee, of course, and it was just a quick scene at the end where he's rowing in a rowboat with the three of you in it. <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, that was going to be his end moment. But then they changed their minds. Somewhere that footage may still exist. <laughs> I'm sure that it does. In earlier scripts, I don't know if you got to read this, but there was a scene where Captain Hook was asking the mermaids what happened to Peter, and one of them spit in his face. And then he found out that Peter was still alive because of them. Yeah, Whoa. that was that, that was the script that, that we first that I first had, and that was the part that I thought I thought I had gotten. And and I was I remember being devastated when I got to set and they were like oh no you're just doing the scene underwater and then this one thing with in the boat with Bob and I was like wait but we have these scenes and all this dialogue yeah. and I was I was we completely actually, shattered yeah we Go actually ahead. auditioned each of us with a three page scene well mm-hmm. I did <laughs> with a three page yeah, scene um, with Peter Pan and I don't remember the spitting part. <laughs> but the scene was fairly seductive, um, and I thought that scene was going to be in the movie also. Um, and I thought I was cast as that. Hey, <laughs> mm-hmm. when I first got the news that I was cast in the film, did you, re- did you remember that? Um, I remember there. I went back about three or four times, like for callbacks. But uh, and I read the the different scenes. Um, and then I met with Stephen and a couple of other people by themselves. Uh, just to, we didn't really, I didn't do any acting or anything from the scenes. He just wanted to talk to me as a person. Um, did you guys have any of that experience? I, I had to read for him, but, I, but no, wait, did I read for him? I can't remember if I, I read... I read originally for a casting director I was put on tape and then I had a meeting with him face to face, him and, you know, three or four people face to face. And they, they taped that meeting, but I kind of think that I didn't read at that meeting. I think it might've just been like a 20 minute conversation. Yeah. Yeah. But that was Um, 25 years ago, but (laughs) I, mm, I think it was a conversation. Yeah, the callback. Uh, yeah, as I uh, as I recall, uh, the callback uh, was a long conversation with Stephen and a couple of other people, and a camera pointed at us. Mm-hmm. But we talked naturally. And what yeah. was that first day like on set when you first met one another? Did we meet before then? Hmm. No. Yeah, we met before being hmm. on the set because we went to dive school. That might be where we That's how right. we first met. Hmm, yeah, but I feel like I saw you guys for the first time on the set, and then we went to dive school. Oh, really? Oh, maybe we were on the lot for a fitting or something. Well, we did have yeah. our fitting before we went to, around the time of the mm-hmm. dive school, we had fitting. Mm-hmm. So we might have- for some reason, there is a couple reports saying that there was sometimes difficulty with the costumes, especially the tails. 
Um, yeah, the difficulty was that they made a mold. They said they were going to make three molds from one of each of us, and they made one mold of Stephanie, and then they thought, hey, why don't we just make three tails out of this one mold? But Stephanie is the shortest girl with the smallest feet. So my tail was killing me, and they had to carve the inside out. And then they thought with Shannon... Shannon, you want to tell the, that, your part of the story? <laughs> yeah, and that's um, my tail. I don't remember. It fit pretty well, but I didn't have feet on my tail. I was <laughs> I was still part human. I mean, I still had human feet, interestingly enough. My tail yeah, because, stopped at my ankles. Um, right, because not, originally the scenes were above water, and they weren't going to show our tails all the way. Right. Mm-hmm. So, and then when they switched and put us underwater... You were swimming with a tail that had no, that your feet were sticking out of the bottom. Of. <laughs> that presented challenges trying to cut, get a, get shots and cut it and edit it just so my feet were showing. But I will say that the hair, makeup, tail experience was eight hours long. Yeah, our call time was so, 2 a.m. to get to start yeah. shooting at 10 a.m. Did they transport you? With, I don't know, with a truck instead so they could put you laid out? <laughs> yeah, that, no. uh, they, they've had us in stretchers, I remember that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They carried us around on stretchers. We were in a 22-foot deep tank, which is on the MGM, the old MGM lot, and that was the last tank, Steven Spielberg said, remaining from the water musicals that they used to shoot. So they had, they had underwater speakers in the tank, and Steven Spielberg had a room on, at the bottom of the tank, and he could watch us and direct us, and we could hear his voice perfectly. And then I also read that there was a, a funny story where Dustin Hoffman uh, kidnapped you guys. I'm using that in quotations, kidnapped. He murnapped us. <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, we, we didn't really, we had, a, we had a wig fitting. They just took a mold, and then they, t- and then they had the wig made and they said to us oh yeah you don't need to come back for another fitting the wigs will be done on the day you're, that you shoot and so we started talking amongst ourselves and we're saying wait a second they're not gonna like aren't they like something's gonna go wrong with those wigs so we showed up we like just went to the set and showed up and we said you know what will you try those wigs on us because we're afraid that something's not gonna go right and they were and they were like oh like put off, you know, like we're causing trouble or something. And so we walked around for a while. They, they kind of brushed us off and said, come back later. And then we were walking around and Dustin Hoffman goes, girls, get on my, get on my tram. We're going to go watch dailies. And we went and hung out with him in his trailer all day. And then all of a sudden the hair people were banging down his door. We need these mermaids right now. Even though they didn't really want to do the fitting for our hair again. And then when they did the fitting, when we finally went back, none of those wigs fit. <laughs> <laughs> so, Dustin Hoffman was serving us um, Guinness with champagne, wasn't it mixed together? It was it's really a, gross. <clears throat> wow. It tastes very good. <laughs> it was some kind of dr- an Irish drink called the Black some Russian. What is no. that? No, no it, you're right. It was Guinness and champagne. Uh, a lot of people were in the trailer. Uh, I don't remember. I I don't know. I think I was pulled off somewhere. From, I was talking to someone else or something like that, but I didn't remember any of the Guinness uh, champagne cocktail. But um, <laughs> I think because I was distracted <laughs> somewhere else. But yeah, it was very upbeat and fun, and uh, a lot of it was very happy. It seemed to me. Yeah, there I were. Danny DeVito. Yeah, Danny DeVito came there. by. <laughs> yeah, there were about there were some famous there. people coming just, and going. Uh, yeah, let's make that clear. It wasn't just yeah, yeah. <laughs> drinking. <laughs> Yeah, there we were really about 30 other people. people. There were lots of people. He was entertaining, and we were just part of the crowd. Um, right. A small crowd of people. Anybody Adrian Lynn? Or yes. 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 Adrian Lynn. Mm-hmm. That must have been a lot mm-hmm. of fun, though. Yeah, I think because there was, so, there was a lot of hype around this film, and the sets were huge. So did you get a chance to one day just walk along where the Lost Boys were and on board the pirate ship to see it for yourself? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, we saw. We, we walked around all those sets. Was it stage 27 they built the pirate ship? I think it was stage Gosh. 27. I don't know. Incredible set. But... There were lots and lots of people who weren't in the movie who were coming to see the set. 
Yeah, the pirate ship was really ship very impressive. I agree. What about that huge alligator that was right at oh. the, the tail end of the ship? I think it was. It was and the skateboard park was would have been exciting to boys. We weren't that interested, I don't think. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, running into the Lost Boys, what did they think of you guys? Did they only see you in full makeup, or...? I just remember Rufio was very flirty with us. I remember that. (laughs) (laughs) You want to know something funny, um, in hindsight, that is now funny. At the time, we kind of were the only, like, female eye candy in the movie. Or at least, you know, that's what we were supposed to be, because besides Julia, obviously, but as among the general cast because it's all pirates and children. Then they kind of added this role of this other person who was playing um, an older Wendy. And I remember, I think it was you, Shannon, who was like, there's this girl on set. Who's this girl? And we went and checked her out, and we were like, ah, she's some nobody. Like, ah, she doesn't, she's nothing. She doesn't, she doesn't hold a candle to the three of us. Like, we're the, we're the hot chicks here. And that girl ended up being Gwyneth Paltrow. And sometimes I still look at her and go, oh, there's that nobody. There's that, there she is. And, of course, we, we lost two uh, Hook cast members. We lost Bob Hoskins and also Robin Williams in the past couple of years. And you got to work with both men. Why don't we talk about Bob first? What was he like in person? He was charming. He was really nice. He was funny, very sweet, yeah. very helpful. Very professional. We had, yeah, we had a scene where we were feeding him grapes and wine on a boat, on the boat. And he was very charming. Where exactly were the three of you when you heard Robin had passed? I was at home. I think we all, you know, I saw it on the internet or something. And uh, I was very surprised. Like, yeah. shocked, really. I was yeah, really I was shocked, shocked too. Was, yeah. Because he, he didn't seem, uh, he seemed so in control, so just to, down to earth when he was talking to us a lot of the times, to me it seemed. Um, mm-hmm. you know, very sensitive and understanding, and, and so I was really surprised to hear the news. It's just really heartbreaking. When was the last time that you got to speak with him in person or, or send him an email? I haven't talked to him since the since uh the premiere party yeah i hadn't either on set he was also very funny on set and joking a lot so uh it's hard to be nervous when you're laughing really hard mm-hmm. and we laughed a lot with him i mean he had a serious side as well like in the makeup trailer and um off the set he was um very calm and very kind what was it like working with Steven one-on-one? It was fantastic. It was all, it, he was very creative in things he would talk about, or we would finish stories, or he would tell a funny story and I'd finish it, or something like that. Um, right before we do the scene, to me, the, our interaction anyway. I just remember he told a lot of stories about previous movies like Jaws and and, you know, of course, you're, like, on the edge of your seat. You're like, wow, <laughs> I'm actually here doing this with him. And I think we went to dailies a lot with him, too. Oh, that's right. Yeah. He's a visual genius. And I think, Shannon, you said something when we were... We talked a, a while back, actually, before we, we scheduled this interview with everyone. But you said something along the lines of... Um, the scene for the mermaids. He told us, or he told me that he kept this scene in the movie that the studio wanted to cut the movie uh, to save money because the movie was just really going way over budget (laughs) and getting drawn out to a very, very long shoot, a lot more than they had anticipated, and they were looking for ways to save money. And he said, oh, no, I fought very hard to keep the mermaids in the film because this scene is for all the girls, all the little girls. (laughs) Oh. I love that. Mm-hmm. He was thinking about everyone, and I'm glad he did keep it in because we love seeing you. And I, I almost forgot, you all had names, too. I, I know I we all introduced ourselves as different colors for the mermaids, but originally in the script, you all had names because you all had dialogue. So what were your individual names? Mine was Babs. 
Mine was Angelica. The, the blue was That's Angelica. That's right. What about you, Shannon? You don't remember? I, didn't, I don't remember. <laughs> oh, goodness. <laughs> I have my script somewhere. Now I want to go find <laughs> that script. And, but um, <laughs> I don't remember the original name. I felt like we had a number, like one, two, or three, but that, that was also in the credits, so maybe I'm remembering the credits. Did you guys receive any keepsake after the filming? Like, did you get to keep maybe a possible wig <laughs> or maybe a scale of the tail? <laughs> I think they auctioned them off, I think. Did they really? Yeah. Uh, I never saw that. I didn't know I that. I didn't know that either. Yeah, the wigs and the tail and everything, like whatever Yeah, else. that's studio property, hmm. so... Yeah. Um, <laughs> We didn't get to yeah. keep any of those items later to end up auctioned in private mm-hmm. collections or <laughs> who knows mm-hmm. where one day they may be. But the studio does archive a lot of costumes. Well, I have a little fun game. I call it the Pixie mm-hmm. Dust Lightning Round here. So uh, we'll go through. Regina can start and then Shannon and then Stephanie. And I'll just ask whether you like this or that. And they're all Peter Pan related questions. And so the first one is Peter Pan, the Disney film or Peter Pan, the 2003 Australian film, the one that they made recently with Jason Isaacs. Disney film. Because I didn't even see the other one. I didn't see it either. I didn't either. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Wendy or Tinkerbell? Tinkerbell. Tinkerbell. I'd say Tinkerbell too. The pirate ship or the Lost Boys Clubhouse? Pirate ship. Mmm. <laughs> pirate ship. Pirate ship. Mr. Smead or Rufio? Mmm. Oh. Rufio, he was so cute. It's <laughs> just me. And finally, Peter Pan or Captain Hook? Peter Pan. Oh, I don't. I kind of like Captain Hook. Dustin Hoffman was a great Captain Hook. Peter Pan for me. That's a, that's a tough one. <laughs> <laughs> I want to make sure our audiences can find out more information about all three of you if you're doing any upcoming projects. So, Regina, why don't you tell us about what you've done since Hook and what you are currently working on now? Um, well, a couple of years ago, I directed a documentary on the band Fire Riot, which is currently on Showtime. And I also produced it. And you can see it on iTunes and Amazon Instant Video, as well as Showtime On Demand. And I am producing, I'm developing a few more films and TV shows, but I don't have anything that I can announce right at this moment. What's the name of your production studio? Pink Mermaid Productions. (laughs) (laughs) I love that. That's what I wanted to really ask quickly, because I love how you're keeping it in the family there. (laughs) Well, you know... Wow. I'm impressed, Regina. That's awesome. I've gone in a completely different direction, actually. Um, I'm working as a healer. Um, I shoot my own films, uh, swimming with uh, wild dolphins on the big island of Hawaii, but I haven't finished Wow. (laughs) You became a mermaid, for real. (laughs) Uh, Yeah, I kept in. I I love water. (laughs) So, yeah, swimming with dolphins is one of my favorite uh, things to do. I want to do that. Can I come swim with dolphins with you? Really? You should come to Hawaii uh, sometime with me. I <laughs> you're all, both to. of you are invited, really and you, swim. Tammy, also, you're invited. <laughs> it's, it's really special. <laughs> Shannon, that sounds great. It's like you're, you can use your mermaid skills. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yes, exactly. <laughs> okay, well, I was a commercial actress. Uh, I did a lot of commercials uh, before Hook and after Hook, and I did a lot of Actually, I worked with uh, Francis Ford Coppola and Rob Reiner doing a um, huge production of their, what they, they wrote these commercials, these particular commercials, the two of them, different commercials, um, and I was a part of them. Um, and then I also had a smaller bit part similar to Hook where it was like, I don't know, a minute or so in Jerry Maguire. Um, and then after that, yeah. I thought, okay, I really have to figure out what I what I want to do here um, because I was at a crossroads and I went to school and and now I have a uh, neuroscience doctoral degree 
So, um, and I'm applying wow. to med schools. So my, I'm working in healthcare. I'm crazy about healthcare. And so that's um, been in academia since Hook. So <laughs> it's been a long, um, long road, but I'm really enjoying it. I'm really, it's really great. I'm really having a fantastic time. So, yeah. I'm so glad to hear all of you are doing very, very well and, and continuing whatever career that you've chosen, you know, since Hook. And and very lucky to have you on the show to talk about your experiences on Hook. And before we go off to Neverland, one more question. If you could describe your entire experience working on Hook in one simple word, what would it be? Life-changing. Memorable. I think Regina hit it, life-changing. That was definitely... 